Hi, this is Carol Mixon, and I have Sue Havland here with me, and I'm so excited because uh, it, we've talked about this over the years. Like we were going to get together and talk about like some storage tales, the true and the strange. And I hope you like this because it's a lot of fun, and it is just really weird. <laughs> that's all I can say about it. Is like you know, it just that's just life, right? How about your worst break-in? Sue, did you, what's your worst? <laughs> How many? What'd you say? No, I said the one I got beat up over. I oh, yeah, my, tell me, tell that story. I love that story. <laughs> I started my storage career. I, I was less than six months in and I got the crap beat out of me by another lady. <laughs> but um, I um, took over my first storage site. I took over one that had been really mismanaged and had all kinds of issues. And so you know, not quite six months in, I went out one morning, I'm still, you know, in my 20s, I'm bouncing out, and I'm thinking, you know, doing my rounds on my golf cart, and I'm like, door open, door open, door open, I had over 80 units cut, and so as I started calling everybody, you know, 79 of them had nothing missing, and the 80th one was pretty much cleaned out, except for a couple things in it, so long story short, a woman who was getting divorced, who didn't want to be, had one day while her ex was at work, had gone and cleaned out his apartment and put it in storage. And he had, with his friend, they were all cops. And he had, she wasn't, but he was. They were all, um, instead of doing it the right way, him and his friend had come in and got his stuff. They had a general idea what it was, taking their stuff while, you know, one evening. And, but when she came back in, because I called her as being the tenant, she comes back in, she takes it as that I'm sleeping with him and I let him come take his stuff. And she jumped me on the property and took me by surprise and was bashing my head into the concrete. And oh my gosh. when the police came, her mom who was with her and her like three-year-old son was with her. She did this in front of her son. Oh. Um, when the police came, her mom lied and said that I had hit her first. And so I'm like that. You know, I'm all cut and blind. I don't even think I scratched her because I'm thinking, I can't fight back. I'll lose my job. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, so then my area manager at the time, this is back in the days when you had pagers. You know, right. I always had to him if anybody was looking for him because he was over at the corner bar. So the day that she had to come back to get the last couple things that were in her unit, he was supposed to meet her and he was at the bar and he didn't come and I had to deal with her again. Oh, man. But that was quite dealing with me personally one of the worst break-ins because of my own safety but um i'd say lately um for me some of the worst ones are some of the ones my staff are having to deal with with the uptick in crime when we have properties that are near where they're allowing big homeless encampments yes that's and, bad it? yeah and then you know i have one that has a big rv lot and you know a catalytic converter take gets people a lot of money on the street. So mm. they're hitting the vehicles hard for these catalytic converters. And, you know, you're seeing them come in, this picture's indicative. They have hoods on or you can't yep. tell, you know, you don't have any issues. And then, you know, you, you've got a 700 person camp less right. than a mile away. Where do you think it's coming from? Yeah. Boy, that's bad, isn't it? I had one uh, at one of my big properties and we had 80 break, little over, I think maybe 83 break-ins total, but it was over several months. And um, I kept looking at the, the gate logs and who's coming in, who's coming out and what times and stuff like that. So, and you know, that, that can, for, for a big, really big property, and that can be pretty extensive, right? So I was looking through it and looking, this is the old type you had to print, right? <laughs> so I'm looking and looking and, and I'm thinking, geez, what the heck? And then I called this one because this person came in at like four in the morning. And I'm four in the morning. Why would she, th this person have 24 hour access first off? And then um, she said, wow. She said, I haven't been to my unit for over a year and a half. I put my stuff in and I moved to the Bay Area and I haven't been to it at all. And so I said, okay, because there's some stuff missing, you know, this is what's happened. But they, but from her, there's stuff missing from her unit, but also the, the code to get in that particular day was her code. So I thought she might have been a suspect, but as it turned out, no, she was ended up the victim of one of it because I didn't realize that at first. But anyway, so uh, I don't know why I missed that. But anyway, as we, I decided one day, I said, this is all happening really early in the morning and it's happening like every week. 
so and at the time I had um, a pretty big Doberman. I had a well, they're they're anyway not not so sweet. And so um, I I waited and I saw someone going in, in the, with this truck, and I'm looking. I'm thinking. Oh my gosh. And I had some like opera glasses because I go to the opera. I don't have like really like other glasses. So here I'm with my little opera glasses <laughs> trying to see who this is. And it's my maintenance girl. She had come out of the military and I had hired her, but she didn't make it very long in the military. I think she made it two years or something. And then was she said she got out for some reason. She's being harassed. But anyway, now I don't believe that. But <laughs> and so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's an inside job. My own maintenance person is doing this. And so I pulled around, uh, I got my, where my dog and I were in the car. And so I pulled around the back. And so we had a really an interior, we had exterior drive up, but we had also had an interior building. And so um, I, I let my dog go and I had said, seek. And so, and then all of a sudden I hear all this stuff clanging on the floor. Cause she obviously heard me say, <laughs> say that. And you could hear my dog like running and running and running. And then she screams and she starts running and she runs her vehicle. So I'm trying to follow the, where the dog was going. And, and then I realized, oh no, she's running out. So I'm, <laughs> I'm running after her. And so she's already in her car and my dog is up trying to get in her car and, and so um, I was worried about my dog too at this point, but um, I stand in front of her car and I said, listen, you need to get out. I've, I'm, I've already called the police. They're on their way. And then she just starts it up, revs up the motor and starts, and she's like, I'm going to run you over. You either get out of my way or I'm going to run you over. And I, I thought she was serious. So I just backed off and had my, got my, pull my dog back, but it was just the weirdest interaction. And she got out of there before the police got there, but they, I gave her the information to where she lived and some other stuff like that. So they went to arrest her and she got arrested and, um, and was, um, I don't know, we, I don't think we got her for every one of the, the um, thefts, but we got her for about eight of them. So it wasn't for sure. We knew that she was on the site during those times. So, yeah. I've, I've got another site right now too. The manager has just been exceptional in his due diligence and, you know, everything you're trying. And we've got a guy, we think they were a little team working. So you have a guy who would come in on his bike because it's one of the older facilities. Oh. The gate opens in the morning. Yep. And so people come in, um, there's not enough street frontage to do the keypad type of entry. Yeah. And so, was, you know, my poor manager, he's like, how did I, I got another unit got hit? They're not really getting much, but well, it's because the guy's coming on a bike. So you can't put much on a bike. So he's doing the quick grab. But then we had another one start coming in with a car and he would wave and Rick, you know, would be like, I don't think that's our tenant, you yeah. know? And doing it and so long story short one guy got caught and then they started threatening him they drive by on the bike and say we're gonna get you and they're yelling this stuff at him yeah but um, one of the last times they broke in and it's quieted down so we think maybe they've all been caught at this point <laughs> but when he came in the unit he broke into he left his bag of meth the police said it was probably about a four thousand dollar street value wow yeah and we're like, oh great he's gonna come back when he realized <laughs> looking that for that grabbing a radio he left his math or whatever and he did he tried to come back and he came in a car and you know rick's noticed right away it wasn't a tenant he went out there and and or the maintenance guy and they he was the same thing they were going to try to run him down in the car because they were coming back for their math and it's like hey dumbass the police yeah. have math <laughs> you know? yeah yeah that's something isn't it Jeez. what's been the most expensive storage mistake you've come in to fix well, I think for me, and maybe similar for you, is one of the biggest ones when I inherit stuff or I help my clients to help them fix things are having improper sales, mm -hmm. and then, you know, dealing with that, but also having the wrong settings and giving too much leeway to too many people to be able to right. change things in the system. So, you know, some of the most expensive ones, you know, my clients that I've had to help them with is, you know, getting rid of people who were, you know, had figured out all kinds of way to pocket money and you know the site be none the wiser because they don't you know know the software as well they don't know the settings you know one of the biggest things back in the day is you know if a, a manager had administrative rights they could change the ledgers and it didn't really show the record or you know you had to go in a back door to get those records and if you didn't have anybody looking you didn't know and before you know it you know a hundred dollars they test the waters and a hundred dollars becomes right and then you know next thing you know it's 30 some thousand dollars or more 
then yeah. it can it can escalate very quickly when they you know figure out you're not paying attention. So or yeah. every has a discount and it really doesn't, you know. Yeah, and I think so. Uh, some owners and area managers don't really watch closely enough on those things. I know your husband Craig does. They're they're like like hound dogs. <laughs> But um, I do think it's this is one of those things where if you're not an owner or, you know, that's a great to, reason to have a management company, right? The, so they watch those sorts of things. But I think my the most uh, I've ever found as like an auditor is over 80,000. And it was up in Scottsdale. And and we tried to prosecute. And it was really difficult because the the ledgers are complicated. And even the police officers and the DA, they were like, wow, we just don't understand these uh, site link ledgers. So we're not even sure how we're gonna um, you know, prosecute them. So they let them go. They finally ended up letting them go. So I'm like, wow, that's just sad. I, you know, I have another one. It's not the most expensive one, but it's an ongoing one because it's a facility where the same person still works. I have um, a client who used to have me do their audits and I go in every year and show them a new way each year their manager was you know pilfering cash for their pocket yeah and you know first year it was through the petty cash sneaking things through you know whether groceries or you know yep. an end that obviously aren't for the site and then it was through postage then it was through discounts and then it was like submitting they had an office depot and a home depot credit card but then the receipts that where the stuff had been charged on the company credit card, then the receipts would get put through Petty. So just through those kind of receipts alone yeah. each month, they were making $100, $150. Yeah. You know, and the response was, well, it's such a big property and it brings in so much money. They might be taking a little bit, but, yeah. you know, maybe, you know, if we got somebody new, it could be worse. And I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> creative this is just you know the surface stuff you know and, and i'm like and you don't have a system in place about signing for discounts and that it's probably way more and it's yes you know, this worked for you for like 15 years so. yeah you know what sue that is the weirdest thing to me is i can't tell you how often i've heard that from owners or management companies that I've done audits for, they're like, well, you know, we really don't want to turn them over. Maybe it was just a one-time thing. I'm like, no, this, this, it, I'm showing you it's not one time. And and it's progressively gets worse. And they just don't see that. And they'll leave them on there because it's too much hassle to look for someone new or costly to get someone new. I'm like, wow, yeah, you're, you're okay with some embezzlement? Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's not, it's weird. One of the sites I manage now, the old manager's husband was doing the books. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's funny, every year there'd be like $1,000, $1,200 for tree trimming, but they'd never had the 21 palm trees trimmed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's yeah. funny. yet they found someone to pay or how, somewhere to get to the back to the manager. Yeah. How, and did, they you, were, how did you submit the, the reimbursement? Oh, yeah, it was just a fake they probably had a bank account and it was just a fake name yeah. of a vendor that didn't exist. And then they um, said that the people, they didn't live on the um, on-site house. It has a house. And they said that the people living there did maintenance and did the gate for the rent. But when I took over and went to kick those people out, they were paying like $800 a month in rent to the manager. Yeah. You know, the house. And she was paying herself like a thousand dollars a month. A month checks in bonus, not through payroll, but right dollar check bonus check. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Add it up, add it up, add it up, and so and that was somebody who had worked for them for like 28 years. Yeah. You know. I, so, I had one in Atlanta yeah. where they um I the someone else besides us <laughs> came in first and couldn't find any theft, and so then the guy brought in me. So I when I went in there. I thought, okay, well, I'm not gonna, I'm just, I don't wanna, don't wanna look at whatever else was sent. I'm just gonna do my own thing. And by noon, I figured it out. And so then the the owner came over. I said, could we walk out on the property? I wanna talk to you. And so now this, the people that were there were, he went to high school with both of them and uh, they were the godparents of his kids. And so as we're walking out there, I said, you know, it, this looks like this this RV right here. He said, yeah, whose is that? It's parked in the manager's place. And he said, aren't they pissed about that? I'm like, well, actually, that's your manager's. And he's, he looked at me 
And the look on his face, like you could see the, like the blood draining from his face. He said, oh no. He said, you found how, how they were stealing, right? And I said, yes, sir, I did. And I said, and this is what they purchased. So then we talk a little bit and then he said, I want to confront him right now. This, you know, I can't, I can't go back in there without, I, I, I'm too upset. So he goes in there and he said, but I, he said, I got to get it off my shoulders. So <laughs> we walk in there and he said, how could you do this to me? And, and they, the woman broke down crying and the, the, his friend that was the guy, he was like, Hey, you live in a beautiful house. You drive this really nice car all the time. You live in a gated community, you know, and he went on and on about, and, and he said, but you know, this, I earned this. I worked, I've worked all my life for this. And so they had this big discussion, but I just, it was heart wrenching because these were like longtime friends. So you don't even know sometimes when you think, oh, well, this is my so-and-so that's here and they would never do that. You just, you just don't know, do you? Well, and it's the thing, you can have somebody who works for you for years that is great and something happens in their life and changes and yep. they have to figure out a way to deal with that. And right. they know that you have never questioned anything or look at anything. They yep. will start in waters to get um, out of their predicament, whether they're helping a child or, you know, another family member or they get a gambling addiction. Or they get a drug addiction, you know. I, I'd say as an industry as a whole, we don't we don't do a good job at all about watching the the theft. And I know you and I we kind of stay busy doing some of this, but when you realize it, look how many companies don't even do audits, <laughs> not even yearly, don't even you know. I mean, it's just to me, it's phenomenal that you would have such a a nice, wonderful industry. And yet we, there's the word you know, out there is just like, why don't you, why aren't you checking the doors? Why aren't you looking through your reports? Or they look at the reports and they're like, yeah, something's amiss. Or it's making so much money we didn't even notice. It's just yeah, weird. Kind of thing, paying somebody like us and there's several of us out in the industry that, you know, the we do this. Us to look at it would, and the big picture would save them so much money. But I, I you know, in all fairness, I've done audits for people. And then when I try to follow up with them to go over some of the things that concern me, they haven't even looked at it yet. And, you know, yeah. they've had the report for weeks or months, right. or I never hear from them. Maybe they didn't like what I had to say, you know, because right. or they're embarrassed or, you know, it's like, well, I hope they, you know, get this fixed. Cause, yeah. You know, I do they're the same thing. On the table or letting it run out the door. I usually have like a three ring binder of like several inches of of showing them how it, it, the theft happened and and this and they're like yeah I kind of read the first thing but I you know didn't look through any of the rest and but they're they left them there I'm like wow I just I I I can't understand that for the life of me and but I will say there there have been I most people when I talk to them they will you know can front them and get rid of people but others just I'm <laughs> just amazed I'm just amazed they would leave someone like well maybe they're just stealing less than the next guy. <laughs> hey, another ex expensive storage mistake people make and that we end up fixing is when they don't check references or see if people are eligible for rehire because you and I have both walked into locations and seen managers that we've fired elsewhere for theft. Yes. We've, we've yes. laughed about this for years that we have both had that happen where we show up somewhere where somebody got hired that we found stealing somewhere else because right. they didn't start to ask if they were eligible for rehire from their last company. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, I, they might not have listed that company, but right. yeah. Yeah. I, I had one just, I was at a, um, Arizona association board meeting and I was chit chatting. We were at a cocktail thing and I said, Hey, these managers wanted to say hi. And, uh, and, and he looked at me really weird and he's like, honestly, and he's a really super nice guy. And I, and he looked a little like frustrated. I was like, yeah. And he said, well, they, they stole the washer and dryer when they left when, from us. And I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, that doesn't, <laughs> he's like, why would they say hello to me when they stole from me? I'm like, yeah, that is a little weird, isn't it? <laughs> I just, I just, I can tell you there though. I've, I've, when I like auditing, I've caught people like the same person several times, multiple times. And one, especially in Hawaii, and one guy on the West Coast that I've, I, as soon as I, I like, I, he worked for me, and then he left and did the same thing. And, and he always, it's funny, because if I ask, you know, does, did, did he ask for a, a hot tub? Because <laughs> that's what he loves to have, a hot tub. And he, he's like, negotiates with the owner to get a hot tub. And I'm like, oh, I know who it is. I've already fired him from my place and, and from another place. <laughs> 
this is weird. Life, this storage life is very strange, isn't it? <laughs>